Hello and welcome. In our lesson today, we are going to discuss practical questions on transport in plants. Now, this is actually part two. There's another video that I've posted that features questions from transport in animals. Please watch it. I'll link it below in the description box. Let's begin. The diagram below shows electron micrographs of cross sections of two different plants, but from the same region. Examine them and answer the questions that follow. So part A, identify the region of the plant from which the sections were obtained from. Now, normally in such questions, they just want you to identify whether the sections were obtained from a stem or a root. Now, in quite a few instances, you'll find that students base their answer on the presence of root hairs. That is, if root hairs are present, then it has to be a root. If root hairs are absent, then it's a stem. This, okay, the first part is actually correct. If you find a section that contains root hairs, then it's most definitely from a root. But absence of root hairs does not mean that this section is automatically from a stem. Now, let me tell you the reasons why. Sometimes you find that the section could actually be from a plant or from a root that is more mature. Now, root hairs tend to be more developed and abundant in young roots. Now, as they mature, you find that the number of root hairs that are present tend to reduce. Now, this could be one of the reasons that you're not seeing a root hair, even though it's actually from a root. Another reason could be the sample maybe that was obtained was from a part that didn't have root hairs at that section. So my point is this, don't base your answer only on the presence or absence of root hairs. Now, a very reliable way of knowing whether this section is from a stem or root is through the arrangement of the vascular bundles. Now, the vascular bundles that are found in the roots and stems of monocots and dicots tend to have a distinctive arrangement. Now, let's look at the photographs that we have here. Now, looking at photograph one, you'll notice that the vascular bundles are arranged in a ring, whereby you have the phloem alternating with the xylem. So this simply means that you have the phloem, xylem, phloem, xylem, and so on. And these form a ring-like structure. Now, this is found in the monocot root. Let's look at the second photograph. This is even better. Now, if you look at the center, you'll notice that there are certain structures that form an X across of sorts. Now, this is the xylem tissue. When we talk about the xylem tissue present in a dicot root, we usually say that the xylem is star-shaped. This is the star shape we are referring to. So the xylem is star shaped and the phloem is found between the arms of the xylem. This is a distinctive feature of the dicot root. I believe we have answered the first part, which is the root. Now moving on to part B. State the classes of plants to which the sections labeled 1 and 2 were obtained from. Now 1 is a monocot root. So this belongs to class monocotyledonae. Now remember, when you are writing the name of this class, always start with a capital letter. And it's never class monocot, it's monocotyledonae. Now for the second one, being a dicot, that is class dicotyledonae. Part C, name the parts labeled A, C and D. Now let's start with A. So A is found on the outermost region of the cross section. And this of course is the epidermis. Part C is at the center of the cross section, and that is the pith. Now, a fun fact to note is that the pith mostly consists of parenchyma cells. Last one, part D. This is the cortex. Moving on, state the functions of the parts labeled B and E. Now, let's start with the easier one, E. E, as already mentioned, is the xylem. So, the function of the xylem is to transport water and mineral salts, from the roots to the rest of the plants. Now, I want to say this. Some students tend to confuse the two terms, transport and absorption. The xylem does not absorb water and mineral salts. That is the function of the root hair cells. The xylem transports the absorbed water and mineral salts to the rest of the plant. Part B is the phloem, and the function of the phloem is translocation of food substances. This simply means that it's involved in transporting manufactured food substances from the leaves to the rest of the plants. This, of course, happens in solution form. Now, I want to say this. If you had 
may be found it confusing to identify whether B is the phloem or the xylem, just know that you are already asked for the xylem in part E. So the question couldn't have asked you to give the function of two similar parts or two parts that were exact. Our last question, compare the internal structure of section 1 and section 2. So the question is simply asking us for a comparison between section 1 and 2. So let us start. Point number one will be based on the arrangement of the vascular bundles. So section one, the vascular bundles are arranged in a ring with the phloem alternating with the xylem. In section two, the xylem is star-shaped and located at the center with the phloem located in between the arms of the xylem. Now there's another difference between the two and that is the pith. Now in section one, the pith is present. In section two, there is no pith, so the pith is absent. That brings us to the end of our lesson today. I will see you next time.